Now the top focus for the day, Rohit, yes. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has denied that his country carried out an alleged drone attack on the Kremlin, which Russia says was an attempt on its president, Vladimir Putin's life. Big allegation there. Absolutely. Yes, uh, big allegation there coming from Kremlin accusing Kyiv of an assassination attempt at Vladimir Putin. You know, I, I can repeat, repeat this message and I think it will at least will be understandable for, for everybody. We don't attack Putin or Moscow. Uh, we fight on, on our territory. We are defending our villages and cities. We don't have, you know, enough weapon for this. That's why we don't use it any, anywhere. For, for us, that is the deficit. We, we can't spend it. And we didn't attack Putin. We leave it to tribunal. Now, Russia has opened a terrorism probe after Moscow said that it had shot down two drones at Putin's Kremlin residence in what it called a Ukrainian terrorist assassination attempt. The Kremlin has further asserted on how it has the right to retaliate. And in the latest, Moscow has launched an attack on Ukraine's southern Kherson region. According to Kyiv, at least 21 people have been killed and around 50 people have been injured in that attack. Right. Now, Russia's ex-president Dmitry Medvedev called for the physical elimination of Ukraine's president Vladimir Zelensky after Moscow accused Kyiv of a drone attack on the Kremlin. Meanwhile, the leader of Russia's Wagner Group, Evgeny Prigozhin, has said that he believed a promised counter-offensive by the Ukrainian troops had already begun. In an audio message published by his press service, Prigozhin said that the active phase of the counter-offensive would begin in the coming days. Meanwhile, the White House has said that it cannot confirm the authenticity of the reports by Russia that it foiled an overnight attack by the Ukrainian drones on the Kremlin. Speaking at the White House, press secretary said that the administration is aware of the reports but are unable to confirm the authenticity of them at this time. And the White House has announced that it will send a new shipment of heavy artillery and rocket ammunition to Ukraine ahead of its planned counter-offensive. So we are aware of the reports, uh, but are unable to confirm the authenticity of them at this time. And so I don't want to get uh, into speculation uh, from here about what happened. But we are we are indeed aware of the reports. Now, for more on this, we are being joined by Elizabeth Bro, Senior Fellow, American Enterprise Institute. She is joining us from Washington, D.C. Thanks very much, ma'am, for speaking with Vion. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, there has been an accusation from Kremlin, a denial from Kyiv. But looking at the strategy so far, you know, do you think Ukraine carried this out, the alleged attempt to assassinate Putin? Or do you think this is a false flag operation by Russia? The only information we have uh, about this alleged attempt uh, so far is that Russia said Ukraine did it and Ukraine's, uh, the Ukrainian government says it didn't do it. And unfortunately, Russia does not have a good track record of, of, uh, of uh, accurate information. I think we all remember vividly just before Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, the Russian leadership is, instead, Russia had no plans of invading Ukraine. So uh, now, with Russia alleging that that this uh, was a Ukrainian attempt on uh, on the life of President Putin, I'm pretty sure nobody will believe Russia because they so of the Russian leadership so often lies. And so, while we have no information at the moment, the U.S. government, other governments have no information at the moment. Uh, virtually. Everybody will draw the conclusion that Russia has uh, uh, circulated falsehoods yet again. Right, absolutely. In fact, I was just going to come to this. How do you see this impacting the ongoing war in Ukraine? One, of course. And also Russia has said that it has the right to retaliate. What can we expect on that front? Do you reckon this is just another pretext for another offensive in Ukraine? You raise two very important points there. Uh, this uh, incident... Uh, 
it gives Russia the opportunity to expand further expand its war against Ukraine. Now, it's already a full-blown war, but it could, for example, uh, increase its uh, focus on, on trying to, to uh, kill President Zelensky. Now, he's already under massive threats and, and obviously uh, has traveled with bodyguards at any time of the day and night. Uh, but I think uh, <clears throat> this could give Russia an opportunity. This alleged incident, which mostly li most likely wasn't uh, conducted by Ukraine, but would give Russia Russia, the opportunity in the public eye in Russia to uh, further expand its aggression towards uh, particular uh, uh, leading personalities in Ukraine. Now, we could also see it, we can also see it as an attempt to, to uh, create uh, separation between Ukraine and its Western allies. But of course, that assumes that Western the Western allies believe the Russian narrative. And uh, as discussed, nobody, pretty much nobody believes the Russian narrative anymore or whatever Russia comes up with because of its long track record of falsehoods. Right. Well, Ms. Elizabeth Brown, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast with your insights on this.